so normally before I do a deep dive on a stock like I did with Shopify, I did not do a 20 to 25 minute video. My video, I believe it was only like eight minutes and a half. And in only eight minutes, I determined that Shopify is not a buy. Many investors, they spend a lot of time kind of going into the details instead of just looking at the big picture first, look for red flags before you go into the details. So I'm gonna do this again right now with a stock called Spotify and it's reporting earnings uh, next week. Now, if you look at the stock, it did come down a lot from 300 to 114. It's a much better price, of course. The valuation came down too. The price to sales it used to be like uh, six. Now it's around two and a half, which is really not bad. But we're gonna look a little bit deeper to kind of show you what the things I look for before I even decide if I wanna look deeper in the stock or not. The first one, if I go on the income statement and then I just look at the December 2021 and 2020 uh, numbers. Now the revenue did go up pretty decently, which is pretty good, right? But you can see the cost of revenue is pretty high. The gross profit is low. So this immediately tells me that this is not a high margin business. But that's okay, it doesn't have to be a high margin business. But if I go down a little bit more and look at the operating income, it's only 94 million. Now, yes, that's an improvement, but this is very, very low margins for a company like Shopify. So whenever I see this type of low margins, I look over here and see if there's anything they can potentially cut on in the future for them to kind of increase their operating income. But I look at the research and development, I don't think this they can cut it anytime soon because they always need to innovate because the industry is very, very competitive. It has actually no moat in this industry. Maybe they like Shopify, maybe they go to another product and Shopify is held hostage by the content creators that make the podcast on uh, Spotify. And whatever these people want to get paid, Spotify has to pay them whatever they want. So it's really held hostage. And this is not a good position. Now, sales and marketing is the same thing. I don't think they can ever cut on that anytime in the future. And the general administrative is the same type of story. And of course, they made negative uh, 34 million of net income. But they did make positive free cash flow, which is good. Now, what did the company do with the uh, free cash flow it actually made? They repurchased shares. Now, you may say, oh, that's a pretty amazing thing, right? But look what they did. They purchased around 458,000 shares. That's amazing, right? For 89 million at an average cost of $222 per share. Now, just buying back shares like that, it's not a smart move. You only buy back shares whenever you feel your stock is pretty, pretty cheap. And I don't think none of you even agree with me that uh, Spotify is actually cheap at 222 or 240. I mean, this is a big uh, mistake from what the management make, pay $222 because just they want to buy back shares. And this time, whenever I would even issue shares at $222 per share. So you could see the management is very, very bad in the capital allocation. And this is a big red flag for me. This only makes me not want to invest in the company. But let's look a little bit uh, deeper on uh, Spotify. If we look at the shares outstanding, they have been going up a lot. And that's a lot of dilution for you as a shareholder. Now it's at 193. That's a lot of shares. But if they're buying back shares, how are you even getting diluted? The shares outstanding should go down, right? They shouldn't go up. Well, I'm going to tell you why those shares have been going up despite them spending money on share buyback. This is because of stock-based compensation. And this is something I really don't like in those companies. You want to know why? Look first between 2020 and 2021. Now, paying your employees with the shares, it's a pretty good thing. If the stock price is high, okay, but you, if you pay them the same amount and the stock price goes down, like it did with Shopify, almost down 50%, even more than 50%, you're gonna have to issue 50% more shares than you did before to pay for the stock based compensation. So this is really, really bad for the company. Even if they repurchase there as ridiculous prices, you're still gonna get diluted as a shareholder. If Spotify, for example, goes to $50, 
Okay, and, and I wouldn't be surprised if Spotify goes to $50. Now, what do you think is going to happen to those shares? You're going to be diluted a lot from the stock-based compensation. So this is another big flag for me. Before I go and look into all the details with Spotify, those type of indicators can just save me a lot of time and tell me that this is not a good company. But before we decide that it's not a good company, let's look at uh, kind of the valuation model for uh, Spotify. Because if the price is right, maybe it kind of makes up for all those bad things we're seeing here. Okay, and let's look at the, you know, revenue growth and net income estimated for the company uh, Spotify. And we could see they're estimating pretty decent net income growth around 15% every single year. Now, 15% is not bad at all. And I think they may be able to hit those numbers, but maybe not because there's a lot of competition in this space. We've seen what happened to Netflix because they missed out on uh, kind, of, uh, uh, kind of subscription people and stuff. So maybe Spotify reports lower subscription based and then the stock is going to crash like 25, 30% on earnings. It's very much dependent on those gross numbers. Why? Because it's priced to perfection. But instead of getting 15% growth for the next five years. I put in around 12% in my numbers and I think 12% is too much, maybe more 10%, but I just use 12%. So 9.6 billion they made in, in the, right now. If we use the 12%, they make around 17 billion in revenue in 2026. Their net income margin is 0%. You know, they don't make net income, but I estimated their net income margin to go from 0% to 10%. Now that's extremely generous, but I put it in anyway because maybe they can maybe they can even pull it off, but I don't think they can. But let's assume they could actually pull this off and the stock trades at a 20 PE, which I think you guys can agree with me that 20 PE is, you know, pretty fair. Maybe it's been on the generous side for something like Spotify. Why? Because it's low margin and it's not going to grow more than 10% forever, maybe 5 to 7%. So using a 20 PE, you only get a 48% upside. Despite the stock move being down over 50%, you only get a 48% upside. I don't know how the analysts have been doing before, but this is really not a good stock to buy. Only 8% every single year for the next five years. With all those risks, I would say Shopify, Spotify is not actually a buy. I would wait for earnings and see what happened. I would not be surprised if the stock goes down 20-30% if they miss on the kind of active users and stuff. But essentially, it's pretty expensive right now when it's not a buy. I would maybe take a look at it again. If it ever goes, you know, $50, $45 a share, I would say it's a much better buy than 115 with no moat. So I hope you enjoyed this kind of uh, video. If you liked it, please press the like button and maybe consider subscribing. So I hope to see you in another video.